Crocodilians have been around since before the dinosaurs, and though many would have similar lifestyles to today's species, some would change drastically. From the Middle Jurassic, some of these crocs would take to the ocean and become completely adapted to life at sea. These would be known as the Metriorhynchids, a family completely adapted to aquatic life. Their limbs have become flippers, their tails evolved into flukes, and their armoured bodies became smooth and streamlined. They are so adapted to the open ocean, most cannot even crawl on land. They hunt, fight, sleep, and even breed on the waves. They have even adapted to giving birth to live young, since they can no longer lay eggs and nests. Here in what will one day be Europe, a female Metriorhynchid is swimming towards the mouth of a river. Normally her kind doesn't go near freshwater, but at this time of year, the females make an exception. She is a Dacosaurus, a fearsome predator, but while most Metriorhynchids have developed long jaws with small teeth, her species has evolved short snouts with large serrated teeth. While her cousins mostly go after fish, she targets large animals, including marine reptiles. But it isn't food she's here for. This female and all the others arriving here are pregnant, and have come to the mouth of the river to give birth. The vegetation that lines the river and the nearby reef provide plenty of protection for the infant Dacosaurus, to hide and hunt till they are large enough to venture out into more open water. Of course, if all air-breathing animals birthed into the water, the struggle to survive begins the instant they are born. As the mother pushes out each infant tail first, they have to get to the surface and take their first breath of air. Fortunately, it seems that each one makes it to the surface and they rest for a few minutes. There are other female Dacosaurus here, but this is not a good sign. Each one would eat any infants that aren't their own in order to reduce competition. The mother must watch her young as they rest and guard them from any others that might have arrived to give birth, or are leaving having finished their task. Each one of her young rests between one and two minutes before swimming as fast as they can to the relative safety of shallow water. Another Dacosaurus is getting a little too close for comfort. Normally these reptiles swim slowly yet purposefully, but this newcomer is clearly stalking. The mother monitors the intruder, knowing exactly when she will be too close. As soon as her most recent born young gets to the surface, she twists around and charges the intruder, mouth wide open bearing her infamous teeth. The second female turns tail and swims away immediately. With relative safety restored, the female Dacosaurus returns to the surface to finish her task. After ten minutes, she has successfully given birth to all her young, and another two minutes later, they have disappeared from sight. While modern crocodilians will protect their young for varying lengths of time, Dacosaurus and other Metriorhynchids abandon them almost immediately to fend for themselves in an ocean full of vicious predators. One day, some of them will venture into deeper waters, as vicious predators themselves. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down one of the most specialized groups of crocs, the Metriorhynchids. Metriorhynchids were a family of crocodiliforms that appeared in the Middle Jurassic and lived to the early Cretaceous. They were a group of crocs that evolved to be completely aquatic, living their whole lives in shallow prehistoric seas. While all modern crocs are semi-aquatic, only the saltwater crocodile goes into the ocean, but still spends most of its life in rivers and shorelines. Metriorhynchids' whole bodies had changed to never need to come on land. Their bodies have become more streamlined, and even lost their armor plates that are seen on other species. Their limbs have evolved into paddles like other marine reptiles, and their tails evolved into flukes similar to sharks or mosasaurs. These adaptations allowed them to not only evolve into many different species that filled different niches, but also were able to live alongside many other marine reptiles that had already laid claim to the ocean, such as ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, and pliosaurs. Though many have been found in Europe, some have been found as far as South America, showing that they were quite successful. So why did they become fully aquatic, whereas their relatives remained semi-aquatic? 
While Europe at the time was not a solid landmass, and more a cluster of islands akin to an archipelago, with vast shallow seas, it seems that local species of crocodiliforms may have had to adapt to these large salty waters in order to survive, and in doing so, evolved into the Metriorhynchids. In fact, from well-preserved fossils of some individuals, we know that they had developed salt glands. Modern-day sea turtles have these special glands under their eyes in order to remove excess salt from their bodies, allowing them to drink seawater as well as eat animals that live in seawater. Even their ears changed. Scans done in 2020 show that Metriorhynchids have shallower inner ears than their semi-aquatic relatives. Sound travels faster in water than in air, and their adaptations may have helped them triangulate the sounds of prey against the constantly moving oceans. But reptiles lay eggs, so did they haul themselves back onto land to lay their eggs? Like modern sea turtles do? Based on their bodies, it doesn't appear that they would have been able to crawl on land, and since we have evidence of both ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs giving birth to live young in the water, it would seem that Metriorhynchids also adapted this trait. Though some species may have returned to land, especially the early species, one fossil of a Dacosaurus has been found with an unborn young. This unborn specimen was not in an egg and had fully developed flippers, showing that it was ready to swim the moment it was born. Now let's take a look at some specific Metriorhynchids. Magyarosuchus was one of the earliest descendants of the sea crocs, as it still has the armored osteoderms on its body, but has developed a tail fluke. It lived 180 million years ago and grew up to 4.6 meters long. Phalatosuchus was a more adapted species with the streamlined body, flippers, and tail fluke, and had long, thin jaws lined with many conical teeth for catching slippery prey like squid and fish. It lived 160 million years ago and grew up to 3 meters long. Dacosaurus developed very differently, having a short, compressed snout with only a few thick, compressed, serrated teeth. It is likely that this species went after large prey, including other marine reptiles like ichthyosaurs, plesiosaurs, and other metriorhynchids. Dacosaurus was a top predator, living 150 million years ago and growing up to 5 meters long. Tyranoneostis was another long-snouted species, but with blade-like teeth, for cutting into flesh. It grew up to 5 meters long, and its name means blood-biting tyrant swimmer. Metriorhynchids were quite successful, patrolling the oceans for 50 million years until they died off in the early Cretaceous. It's not entirely clear why they went extinct, while other aquatic reptiles didn't, but it may be that at the time there was a small extinction event caused by a drop in oxygen levels in the world's oceans. We often hear that crocodiles haven't changed in millions of years, but the Metriorhynchids show that many members of this family did indeed change quite drastically. There have been sea crocs, land crocs, and of course semi-aquatic crocs that have continued right to this day. Since they appeared in the Triassic, they have been very dominant in whatever environment they live in, and hopefully will continue to do for millions of years to come. But what do you think of Metriorhynchids? What do you think is more terrifying, land crocs, sea crocs, or modern crocs? Let me know what lesser known creature you'd like me to do a breakdown on next, and until then, please like, share, subscribe, and thank you for watching.